Hello. Hi, Sa. Hi, Mary. It's me. Can you tell I'm sitting under the same desk that you were sitting under a couple weeks ago? Uh, yes, I can tell. I can tell anytime anyone's sitting under that desk. I have a light on my on my desk here that lights up actually to tell me. That's what that motion sensor is for. Yes, I was exactly. wondering. Um, I have a question. Okay. Well, actually, no, I don't have a question. <laughs> okay, that's I fine too. Knew, I knew that dude was bad for Marco, and I was right. I, I didn't like the look of him. I didn't even think he was that cute. I didn't, I thought Marco deserved better. And then he goes and gets him into that craziness. What What gave it away that he wasn't right for him? Was it the fact that he had no redeeming qualities whatsoever? <laughs> I just didn't like the look on his face. <laughs> yeah. I think That's anyone it. who holds up a a fifty dollar bill as a flag saying "Pay attention to me now" is not someone you want to hang around with. That's my. <gasps> oh man, I'm so not into like anybody who thinks that like you record like having fun needs to be expensive. Like if that's the definition of fun, like that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> what? I I agree with you, but I also want to know, what's the deal with Ellie buying Marco a $70 shirt? I don't buy $70 shirts, and I'm not in college, you know, uh, living with two roommates, three roommates. It's Canadian dollars. The Canadian dollars are worth more than our dollars now. Oh, so really? it's like a $75 shirt. Oh, man. <laughs> these kids these, oh. these kids nowadays with their $75 shirts. I would, but only for like a birthday or something like important. Not just randomly. You never bought me a $75 shirt. You never bought oh. me a shirt, period. <laughs> I'll buy and you how, that jacket. How many shirt. shirts have I bought you, Mary? I can count at least eight. <laughs> I can count on no hands the number of shirts you bought me. All right. I know you're like jumping out of your pants to talk to Adamo. So let's just... Uh, I'm, let's just call. Let's just yeah, get this over let's with. Let's do this you're still panted. And, uh... All right. Awesome. Okay. Hold on. Hello? Hi, Adama. It's Mary and Seth from the end.com. How are you guys? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Not bad. It's great to hear from you guys. Totally. Um, congratulations on the CLAD nomination. Yes. Oh, thanks, man. We're also, we just stumbled across that, too, accidentally. And Ian and I were on the CLAD um, website, and we're thinking, we should be nominated this year. We did a pretty good job. And there was Lauren Dance Collins and through. Deanna. Nice. Looking fantastic in a photo. So it was very, we're really excited. Oh my god, that's so awesome! I was gonna say, like, you must be kind of personally proud of it because I think a lot of it has to do with Marco as a character too, right? Yeah, I think it's just what we've all done on the show with the issue of, you know, gay life and relationships. And um, I mean, yeah, Marco. All the stories with Marco paved the road for I think Alex and and Paige and what came there. But it was also interesting because it seemed to be the same story, but it really was different. It was. You know, a different perspective and a different take on same-sex relationships and about it being more about companionship and, you know, and Paige not being so much a lesbian as she was just somebody who was connecting with the people in her life. And so it was great to see that our idea, although at the beginning we are thinking this might be a little blurry, um, that people understood it and, of course, respected it with a nomination. Totally. Um, this is long awaited for me. And I, oh, I mean, yeah. something, especially this year with everything that happened, I'm just, I really believe it. And I'm just so happy to be there to support it. Right. Um, speaking of what happened this year, uh, do you mind if we talk about the fact that we, we yeah, saw that you came out recently and we wanted to congratulate yes. you? congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Quite a journey. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it was something that was long overdue. And um, I mean... I know I've been wanting to connect with the gay publication for a long time and, and share my voice, and it was something that inside I knew would happen sooner or later. Um, but I was just waiting for that appropriate time, you know, where I wasn't petrified and I was confident and I I felt like I was somewhat mature enough that I could speak about it and not, you know, shy away from it, from the response that would happen. So I had to be, you know, I felt like emotionally ready for it all. and. And it came to the point where I just felt like my character's arc was kind of coming to a close. So I wanted to put that extra helping hand out there for all the young, you know, kids that have watched the show and that have grown up with the show, and especially the gay questioning youth that looked up to Marco. You know, I just, I, I, I wanted to continue that dialogue just outside the show and my personal life. And as I grow up, and it's something that has become so much a part of what I do and who I am. So 
it was it was it was time and so I'm I'm very happy. I'm happy for you. When you say that it was terrifying, do you think was it more terrifying because of like being a public person? Do you mean like coming out to the world or coming out to your family or Well, I mean being on the show and playing a gay character has so many it brought with it so many layers. Um but I mean, in terms of coming out of my personal life, I mean, here in the city, I was open and, you know, my family and with Epitome and my friends. I mean, Toronto is just, Toronto is just such a family. Like, my the, my city here is just so fantastic. So I've, I've, uh, I kind of, I, I crossed that barrier. I conquered that barrier, sorry, um, a while ago. And this was more about how do I make sense of all this within the media and within, you know, the show and the context of who, you know, the Adamo, the actor, as opposed to just me in Toronto is, you know? Totally. So, um, I mean, there's all kinds of things, you know, thinking, it's like, oh, how's it for my career? Is it blah, 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 this. Is he going to typecast that? And at the same time, it was, you know, um, now are people going to think I don't know how to na- how to act or, um, you know, um, how will everyone's, but then all of that to me was just passing, passing fears, you know? I mean, everyone's always like typecast, typecast, but whatever, I mean, it just it, the more people kept saying that to me, the more it infuriated me, and the more I wanted to come out. Just because here I'm awesome. thinking, you know, you can spend your whole life sitting there being like, "Oh, I may get typecast," and who knows? I mean, I'm going to university, I may end up behind a desk. Like <laughs> then I completely lost. You know, I may not be blessed to stay. You know, being an artist, and then I completely lost the opportunity to share my voice when it actually mattered. Oh, I wish I could hug you right now. That's the best thing I ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have you uh, have you heard any reaction from from fans? You know, not not directly yet. I'm, I'm I'm going to Lauren and I are actually heading to Edmonton this weekend um, here in Canada uh, to meet some kids on a you know a little bit of a mall tour. Um, so I mean, I'm excited to see you know what they're going to say um, directly to me. But in terms of that, I mean, um, in terms of what people have been writing online, everyone's just so adorable. Everyone's so supportive. <laughs> totally. You know, and I. I learned something, you know, I, I, here I am sitting there, I'm thinking, how is everyone going to respond? Is anyone going to care? Um, you know, other than, you know, the people that are, you know, really diehard Degrassi fans. And um, then I thought, you know, what about the people on the periphery, you know? Like the random guy that plays soccer with my dad and my little cousins and they're on, on, at recess. Like, what about these people on the periphery? Like, how is everyone going to respond? And um, that's what made me very nervous. And once it was all done... I realized I underestimated everybody, you know, people were just so loving and accepting and even the people that I could prefer that I thought who knew, you know, like who knows how they're going to react, reacted right. just with such enthusiasm and arms nothing but wide open and that's how all the fans have reacted. They're writing all these adorable things online saying good for you and, and anytime someone says something bad, <laughs> a 30 fans just jump in. Totally. Back. <laughs> totally. Like, oh, that's not true and leave them alone and... So the support has been brilliant, and I, I'm so happy because I really did it for them. You know, I did it for all the kids that are watching, gay, straight, you know, because the message is not just, you know, about directly raising awareness and really trying to put a kind of sense of normalcy, like, uh, to this idea of coming out and coming of age and, and to show that it is so common and it is so normal. And and But it was also mostly for the kids out there that just, dude, man, like we're all little ambassadors for any any kind of difference or anything that's out of the norm, and it's yeah, kind of up to us to really do it, right, and to bring it to the surface. So, um, response has been great. Yeah, I was I was excited to see because I know like over the years you kind of like I remember you told me you deliberately kept it ambiguous because then like everybody's happy like the straight girls can be like yeah I could have yeah. it on if I wanted yeah, them and like the gay girl, boys could be happy and yeah <laughs> totally and like I was like oh my god are the straight girls gonna freak out but they were like oh I'm just so happy for him I don't even care that I can't oh. have him like, <laughs> I know they were adorable <laughs> I know they were just all like good for him good for him and that's like, that's so amazing and, and think about that that's coming from young people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, okay. here's my, I wasn't even afraid of the young people's response. I was anticipating, you know, nothing but positive attitude. I was afraid from the adults' response. And, and it's not really an insult at all. I mean, I mean, it's just like I, when I came up to my parents, was afraid of my parents' response. I mean, right. it's a different generation. And, and for many of us, you know, we're living in Canada and America and North America, different country, different yeah. mentality. And, and, you know, I'm first generation Canadian, just like many of my, for many of my friends, some, like many of my friends aren't. Many of my friends were born in India and Yugoslavia and they immigrated here with their, with their family. So like there's still this, you know, huge wave of, you know, different 
cultures and ideas and and so our generation our youth generation really is going to be the generation to you know not I, I hate to say like you know change because I don't think anybody's mentality and and culture from the outside is going to really change but I think to adapt and to learn and yeah. to you know really come to say you know perhaps this is not what I learned back home or in our generation growing up even here at home but it's something that is happening now and that I have to you know adapt to and learn more about and you know that's why I really I really say it all the time I say it again we're all kind of our generation is like ambassadors you know like the baby boomers kids <laughs> we're, right, right. Leading, we're leading them in the new millennium and with all these new things that are happening voting in record numbers and yeah totally <laughs> And so the more our parents better. and all of us get really lost in this crazy postmodern world of <laughs> craziness and, and confusion, I mean, I think we're the people that are going to make sense of it. Totally. So wait, now how much of an ambassador kind of are you comfortable being? Because I know that, you know, so many kids who watch Degrassi identify with it very closely. Like it's a different kind of TV show. and. Yeah they probably a lot of them would like look to you for very specific advice and like I and you know if you want like I can rattle off the most common questions we see on the message boards just kind of like about like you yeah, know yeah. am I gay is my friend gay like all that kind of yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, are you yeah. comfortable answering those questions or do you think that they should be asking someone else or well you know coming out and doing the cover of you know the magazine and really opening up uh, it was this is something of course I was anticipating and I was hoping because I never had someone like that growing up you know right. someone to look up to and you know just make me feel somewhat comfortable even if it was through the television so I mean I, I knew I knew this stuff was going to happen and it makes me so happy because I want them to feel like they have a source of information but at the same time too I mean right now I mean I'm getting involved in a bunch of you know organizations here in Toronto um, and I mean I did the Trevor Project and it's something that I hope that I can continue with and do a few more things and, because I yeah. really want these to realize that like I grew up with them and these are all the questions I have and I still have you know yeah. these are all like the, these growing up pains that I'm experiencing myself and while I can help raise awareness and, and really you know give them a place to learn about these issues. I don't think, you know, net, no one person is going to, will give the golden advice and right. really give the golden rule to exactly what to do, whether it's a person on television or, you know, it's, it's somebody in your community. I think, you know, it's about talking to a bunch of people, you know, whether it's professionals and social groups and eventually through friends and through parents and like your, your, your network of support will continue to grow. But I mean, I always, tell kids that, you know, while we can raise these issues, we can't solve them. So hopefully, I mean, they'll utilize all the resources in their community. And there's so many social groups. I mean, there's so many here in Toronto. And America always has triple what we have. So um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of things around. And that's why the Trevor Project was fantastic, because it's completely international. Anybody I can love the Trevor Project so much. I mean, I also think what's fantastic about this day and age, and especially with what you're saying, people are writing on the Internet, what I saw on the Internet, is the internet period. I mean, yeah. it can be supportive to one another. And I think that's a huge, huge thing because I mean, I've always believed in young people helping young people and that's the mandate of Degrassi. Degrassi is young people helping young people. Um, and that is, that, that's a formula that is so proven to work. And for young people to go up on chat rooms and online and, and really share ideas with other questioning youth around the country and even around the world is such an amazing support system. And that's why I encourage kids to do, you know, talk to one another, you know, you know, find safe ways of using the Internet to find, you know, a kind of community that you can share your ideas and realize you're not alone out there. And there's kids all the way from, you know, here in Canada to there in America to Australia to South America, all over the place that are yeah, really gonna, yeah. you know, that are sharing in this exact same growing pains and that. And, you know, we're all each other's help, I think. And, and I, I love young people, and I love the whole youth community. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's great. I really do. Wait, can I, so can I ask you one of the kind of like the frequent, probably the most frequently asked question I see, like I've seen over the years on our message boards, and just sort of get your take on it? Yeah, Which is, it. Um, people want to know, like, how does a person know when they're gay? Yeah, it, that's it's one of those, uh, it's a loaded question because I feel like it varies with many people. Right. Um, this is going to be a hard one. I might have to share an anecdote. Yeah, um, that's fine. 
to make a long story short, there was this man that used to live in my old neighborhood um, near my parents' house, and he he was from like the kind of the mental house, and he had like schizophrenia, and there was a few things wrong with him that he completely knew, but it was completely objective, and um, and he said to me, you know, he said, don't. When we were talking about something, and he goes, you know, don't just and he said never really trust your mind and ironically he was making a joke and then he goes you know and don't even like trust and he pointed down into his heart and i'm like well you got to follow your heart right and he's like don't even follow your heart don't even trust your heart and then he pointed right down to the very bottom of his stomach and he said trust your gut uh-huh. like your heart and your mind your heart and your mind will just steer you in weird places logic and passion are just so disorienting but your gut will just keep you right where you need to be and i Whoa. think there's something to say for that i think you know when I was growing up and questioning if I was gay, I mean, I, I always knew in my gut. I always, you know, knew that there was something different about me that way. And, you know, when you're a kid in elementary school, everyone's coming of age. Everybody, nobody, it's the blind leading the blind. Nobody knows who they are. And right. so, you, so you're trying to immediately, you know, just mold yourself around the norm because that's the only way to really survive in elementary school, right? You know, you want to be with the cool kids. And, you know, if all the guys are playing soccer, you go play soccer. And do you know what I mean? And Totally. So... It's, I, think, I think that you always feel it in your gut, but as a kid, it, it's hard to make sense of it. It's hard to make sense of that feeling. So I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes from. And, and I tell you know, young people that it, it does get easier. You, know, you start to really, really trust your gut as you get a little older, and you, know, you have a little bit of a wider perspective of what's happening in the world outside where you play playground, and, and you meet different people that challenge you and that you know, are different in many different ways. And I think as you grow and you become more mature, you get to, you make a little bit more sense of that feeling, and you know now where it fits, and you start to understand what it means to be gay, and you know the consequences, both positive and negative, that are going to be coming, and ultimately what's the next step, how you're going to have to put that, take that, you know, not just that feeling, but make it into your way of life and embrace it, and so. I think it's always there. It's just a matter of making sense of it. And I think that's the challenge of growing up and having this, am I gay or not? That's the challenge of coming out, right? But right. I mean, it's just something that you, you, you know and you always know. And, and once you make sense of it, it's something that you realize, how did I do without? <laughs> Who was I without that, that feeling? That's me. <laughs> so it, 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 that all, it all comes. It, all, it comes as you get older and, um, and, and, and you keep learning. You're still so young. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a great anecdote. I actually like want to like print that out and like hang it on my wall. That's such a good well, this idea. Man was, this man just blew my mind and, and it was so funny. He was probably like clinically not the most sane person in the room. But <laughs> me, he was probably the most normal person. Everybody in their crazy buying lattes at Starbucks. Awesome. That's great. All right, wait. So we have to talk about this episode that just aired. Oh god. So <laughs> Oh my God. Why? Okay, so wait. Our first question was like, why was Marco even into that guy? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, the guy, he was cool. I thought he was pretty cute, wasn't he? He was okay. Yeah, he was cute. Yeah, totally. He was like, I mean, oh, he wasn't no Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was pretty cute. He was cool. I mean, uh, the guy who played him, his name was Ben, and he was totally comfortable and totally cool to play it. Um, you seem to me, you know, you're like, you're a man of means. You're you're a hot young celebrity, and um, you could probably be going out and having all that expensive fun. But you strike me as somebody who like doesn't even care about that stuff, do you? See, I'm a suburban kid. I grew up a suburban kid. We had to be creative with our funds. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm really not like that. You know, I mean, I like a good night out, and I like to put on my skinnies and a dress shirt and go do something fun. But I'm really much more like low key. I'm not a clubber. I don't like clubs. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I'm not the person that will wait in line for 27 years in the freezing cold so I can go in and pay twenty dollars a drink and listen to generic music. Like I'm not that. <laughs> it just does not attractive to me. I'm more of like, how do I round up all my friends and and listen to like a band that we've never heard before, or go see a I'm rated more... G movie or something. <laughs> I still remember your your birthday party where you saw Cars. I loved that. Oh my God, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm more like that. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't need a high roller. <laughs> I don't. And I don't like the high roll either. I don't like yeah. it. It makes me very uncomfortable if I feel like I have to, like, show people a good time. Like, I don't like that. Good right, time right. With, your, like, with the people you're with. Right. Yeah, totally. I I have, like, a really random question. What, um, what are 
what are awards shows like? Like, what is the Teen Choice Awards like? <laughs> oh my god, it was. It's so. It's fun. It's so much fun. It's so weird because like. I like we. You, I watched all that stuff. So being there, it's like surreal. It's quite demystifying because you're like, oh my god, now it's not fake anymore. It's not like this mysterious thing. But yeah, um, not because all the all these people that you watch in like on TV and the movies. Last time I'm gonna say it, all the celebrities are walking back and forth, and you know your heart always just skips a beat when you see somebody. You know, it's like there's Hillary Duff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Shia LaBeouf. You know. Like, oh my so, god! Wait, wait. Did you get up close to Shia LaBeouf? Uh, no, but Stacey had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my Stacey God. Was like, oh, God. And I was like, hold her up. But it, it, it's oh. so much fun. And it was so great to hear our show announced on TV. I mean, that was a step up for us. There he is. Because, right. I mean, when we won a few years ago, we didn't get it like a, an announcement on, on air. So, I mean, I think little, little Bow Wow was just like in Degrassi or something. Or he introduced the category we won in. So that was pretty cool. But it was also very, very funny because, I mean, we're Canadian. And right. and we're like Degrassi. Our fans are like cool underground cult people, you know. Like our fans are like the people that really truly follow us. It's not like the big ginormous celebrities. So we get to we got to sit with the fans and talk to them and hang out with them as the as the Hills girls had their special couch. <laughs> oh God! The special couch, nice. Yeah, there's a uh, sense of sarcasm in my tone. <laughs> <laughs> There really needed to be a Degrassi couch, though. That's just not, that's fundamentally not right. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much for taking time with us today. It is such a pleasure to talk to you. That was seriously, like, my favorite podcast ever. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, thanks for, uh, you know, writing about us and doing all this stuff even seven years later. Can you believe it? Oh, my God, right? Seriously. All right, guys. Thank okay. you so much. Thanks, thank so. you. Have a Have great a day. day. And I'll see you soon, okay? All right. Okay. Hey, bye. Bye-bye. Um, yeah, that actually, I'm really glad we talked to him because that does remind me that I want to, like, shout out the Trevor Project, uh, which is the trevorproject.org, Trevor being T-R-E-V-O-R. And it's, like, it's a suicide prevention hotline specifically for LGBT youth, but it's, um, which is, I'm sorry, lesbian, gay, and bisexual, and transgender youth, but, uh, it's kind of more than like the website especially is more than that. Like I think it's just sort of like a really great place to go for information with questions and just kind of like to get a sense of community online specifically for gay youth. So um, it's one of my favorite things in the world. <laughs> and the other thing I want to say is I hope Damo comes to New York like very soon, like within the next couple hours because I'm leaving very <laughs> soon. <laughs> You're in New York today, and but unfortunately, Damo is in another country. So, yeah, you guys got to plan that out in advance if you want it to I work know. out. I know. I got to get better organized. All right, good talking to you, Seth. Same to you, Mary. And um, I will talk to you next week when we're gonna call our good friend Shanae Grimes. Shanae. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm psyched. All right, talk to you next week, Mary. Okay. Bye. <laughs>